So how do you handle stress? Number one, exercise. That's the amount you need. 20 minutes, two times a day is the least amount of exercise you need. You want to fix your endocrine system and you want to help it. Exercise helps the adrenal glands work properly. Every time you exercise outside in natural light, natural light with no sunglasses over your eyes and no glasses like that. If you're wearing glasses, you go outside, yeah, you put them on the end of your nose like this. You just wear them on the end of your nose if you can't see without, if you've got to go for a walk. But if you do this, they can't bend round corners. They bounce at right angles. So you need them down here or you need them off completely. Eat your meals on the veranda. But try and exercise early morning, late afternoon, early evening in summer. And in winter, it doesn't really matter much. Midwinter, you can go out in mid peak midday sun. It's not going to do any damage. You can wear a hat. Your eyes need to be exposed to the natural eye light because there's a little gland behind your eyes called the pineal gland that regulates melatonin and serotonin. And melatonin is what needs to be high at night. So light suppresses it during the day. And then it comes up at night. And melatonin is what helps us sleep. If you're indoors all day and you never go outside, your melatonin levels are going to be high in the daytime, you're going to be tired, and at night they're going to be low and you'll be wide awake. You'll just run around, not run around, you'll drag your body around exhausted, okay? <coughs> so sleep is even controlled. The, the pineal gland is actually part, works together with that endocrine system. Nobody fully understands exactly how, but it works together with it. It also, it also natural light increases your serotonin levels, which makes you happy. So when you go and take an antidepressant, it's to try and increase your, in, your uptake of serotonin. But the side effects of taking antidepressants are suicidal ideation, suicide, depression, anxiety, sleeplessness, and all these other things. Because again, we're treating the symptoms. Oh, you can't sleep. Here's a pill to make you sleep. So you go to sleep for the first week, you think these are my magic pills, and then the side effects start, and now you can't sleep, and you're depressed, and you're anxious, and you're taking anti-anxiety, and you can be like my mother-in-law who at the age of 69 died. She was on 11 different kinds of medication, all interacting with each other, and she was getting those medicines from three different doctors, so she's taking three times what she should have been taking. She was just completely out of it. All right, so natural light and exercise are essential. This is where you start. And then when you get to your, your diet, free from. Definitely gluten, I found. Dairy, refined sugar, alcohol, and caffeine. All the things we're addicted to. I mean, I was a cheese addict. I was a sugar addict. I was a, you know, loved everything with gluten, cookies and cakes and anything in them. You know, alcohol, people have it. Caffeine, and Mark and I are walking this morning. We're watching people get up to the garage. They're not coming to get gas for their car, petrol for their car. They're coming for their coffee. They run in, they're like addicts, running in, and then they walk out holding this cup. This affects the thyroid gland. Dairy affects the entire endocrine system. It's very high in arachidonic acid. It's got animal cholesterol that's been pasteurized, which is inflammatory to the body. Refined sugar makes your blood sugar shoot up and then drop down. That's affecting your adrenal glands, your pancreas. Your body scrambles. When you put things in that upset those glands, your whole body's scrambling to try and fix that. So it's running here to the thyroid over here, and then it's got the adrenal glands. And then it's got to deal with something else over here, and then it's got to deal with the pituitary gland, and it's just like, it's like trying to juggle, you know, 25 balls, and it's not, it's going to drop some balls, and that's when you end up with problems. That's the reality. These are the, the main things that you need to take out. They affect the uh, adrenal glands, adrenal glands, adrenal glands, uh, ovaries, testes, even animal products. People will tell you don't have salt because it raises your blood pressure, but it's not the salt, it's the the stuff you put in your body with the salt, what is it? It's fast food, junk food, snacks, um, hamburgers, fried chips. It's stuff that contains arachidonic acid. This is a fatty acid that can be made from your body, by your body, only when it needs it. Your body will make it when it needs it if you're getting natural fats from plants. Only when it needs it. But if you're taking it every day at every meal, it becomes a problem. Because what does arachidonic acid do? It increases blood pressure, blood clotting, and inflammation. Every single animal product contains arachidonic acid. It's a fatty acid that's been converted. The animal will eat the grass, eat the grains, take in the omega-6s and convert it into arachidonic acid. We convert it, it becomes part of our flesh. But you only need it when you need it. So sometimes, if you cut your finger and you're bleeding, your body says, quickly, make some arachidonic acid, go and stop the bleeding, and it clots beautifully. So 
Inflammation, you cut your finger, it's bleeding. It's a natural response by the body to cause inflammation. Blood flows there quickly and the whole finger swells up to make you protect it. Now it's sore, it's throbbing, there's inflammation. It makes you clean it, you look at it, you wrap it up and you keep it out of the way and that way it can heal quicker. So inflammation is part of healing, but it's when it carries on chronically, long term, you've always got inflammation in the body, that's a problem. And blood pressure, your body needs to be able to raise it if it drops too low. Shock can make your blood pressure drop very low. And then the body will convert omega-6s into arachidonic acid and bring it up. But it only is there when you need it. If you're getting it in day in and day out, you can end up with all kinds of problems here. You can have high blood pressure, and that's why when Mark changed to a plant-based diet, his blood pressure went down because he stopped putting that into his body. Does that include fish? Yes. Hmm. Doesn't mean you must never eat it. When you look at the actual statistics and you look at things like cancer, heart disease, and diabetes, the recommendations from most of the scientists are somewhere around one to three times daily, no, not daily, weekly, the size of the palm of your hand. So it's that size. That would be an egg three times a week or an egg, a piece of chicken. And if you look at others, they say that less, not more, not more than 5% of your calorie value. That's Dr. Colin Campbell's studies. The China study indicates that pretty clearly. Not more than, and that would work out to about one to three times a week maximum. Avoid outside hormones. Whether that is hormone replacement therapy. So if you've got a hormonal problem and you're menopausal and and, and you've got these problems going and you've got really bad menopause and you're bleeding really badly, you have menstrual periods that last two weeks and you feel like you're bleeding. So if you, you have that going on in your body, you want help, you're in pain, you feel like you're dying, you know? If you feel like you're losing your mind, you're going to go and take hormone replacement because that's what we offered. We never offered anything else because nobody studies it. The Chinese doctors used to be paid to keep the villages well. So they, had to pay, they got paid, and if the people in the community got sick, they got fined. It's different in the countries that we live in. Doctors are paid to keep you as a patient. The more you stay their patient, the more money they make. If they've got thousands of patients, they don't want just 10 patients and they're all better, because then how are you going to live? Nobody will want to be a doctor. It's very sad, actually. That's why it's always better to go to a government hospital, because they'll only treat you They'll only treat what really needs to be treated. They won't just try and add things on and make you spend more time in the bed because they want the money for the bed because they have shares in the hospital. It's actually a terrible system. It's a terrible, terrible system. I'm actually all for national health if it's done properly. So avoid outside hormones. What are outside hormones? Medication with hormones in it totally messes up our body. The good news is you can recover from it. In birth, uh, contraceptive injections, the marina, uh, which is a form of contraception embedded with a whole lot of hormones, completely, I've dealt with so many women over the years, completely messed their metabolism up, messed their bodies up. But over and above that, if you want to get a chicken or a cow or a pig or a sheep to grow as fast as it possibly can if you're a farmer, you will give the animals hormones to increase the rate of growth. I know with the cows, it's like 18 months to be fully grown. They can get them fully grown within three to six months. So if you are getting your return on your investment quicker as a business person, you know, if, I, if I'm in the shop here and, and I am putting money into stock and I can get it back quicker, then that's a good thing. So I'll keep my prices lower to try and get it rotating quicker. And in the same sense, it makes business sense. I understand it. From a business point of view, it makes sense. Get the animals to grow faster, so all the money I've put into the animal will get back quicker. Because it doesn't matter whether the cow is 18 months or six months old, I'm still going to get the same amount of money. So why would I want to feed it for a year and a half, okay? Those hormones that are fed, there's well-known, well-known still bestrol, which apparently is not supposed to be used, but they still use it. But over and above Stilbestrol, there are 11 different hormones used to make cattle grow faster. And, and of those 11, I think nine, eight or nine of them are estrogen based. So what we're seeing is breast formation in young men. We're seeing abnormally large breasts on young women in some instances, like uncomfortable sizes of breasts. 
the, the food that seems to affect the hormones the most, more than anything else, is dairy products. It's considered the number one cause of breast cancer and prostate cancer, which shows it's really, and that's uh, Dr. Colin Campbell in the China study, he's got the studies in there. That's the one that is considered the number one cause of breast and prostate cancer is dairy products. So even if you, you can go and get it organically, so you're still going to get a certain amount of the hormones from the cow, because that milk's supposed to be for a baby cow, not for a human being. We as humans were designed to be weaned by the time we were about two or three years old. But we continue to drink milk because we think, we've been brainwashed to believe we need to have milk for your teeth and your bones and you won't get osteoporosis, which is an absolute lie. Countries that have got the most osteoporosis consume the most cow's milk. That's a fact. It's the countries like the Swedish countries. They consume enormous amounts. Osteoporosis there is bad. South Africa, you'll say we got sunshine. We shouldn't have osteoporosis. In the 1960s, when they looked at the cross-section of the communities, the black community had no osteoporosis. They weren't living in the cities. They didn't have fridges. They didn't consume cow's milk. It wasn't part of their diet. Maybe they made sour milk every now and again. In the colored community, the osteoporosis was, I think, 10 or 15%. And within the white community, 60% of the women over the age of 65 had osteoporosis or brittle bone disease. So, and they were the biggest consumers of cow's milk in the country. Still are. The white community is still the one that consumes. But now we've moved that with advertising. We're seeing that right across the board from all our colors and creeds, these kids are coming to school with their little tubs of yogurt because yogurt's healthy. Yogurt is cow's milk. It contains hormones. It contains arachidonic acid. There's nothing in it that's beneficial. There's calcium in it, but it's about as beneficial as eating chalk. It's not available to us. It's, there's too much phosphorus in it that binds the calcium. So because the phosphorus levels are so high, it's actually acid forming in our bodies. And your body takes calcium out of your own body to neutralize it. Otherwise, you could go into an acid, um, acidosis um, coma. So if your blood becomes too acidic from too, much of the, too many of the acid forming minerals, phosphorus and sulfur, you go into a state of acidosis. Your body knows that. So it goes and takes minerals out of your blood first and then out of your teeth and your jaw and your skeleton. That's why they test. Very often, you can see whether you've got osteoporosis just by the condition of your teeth. If you have a lot of fillings, you're losing calcium from the jaw, which means you're losing it from the skeleton. So we're always being told it's what you eat, but it's usually from what's coming inside. Okay? Dairy products is of no benefit to us. These outside hormones are probably the worst place. We're having breast formation in young men. My concern is that these hormones are flowing, getting in our food, into our bodies when we're pregnant, when our children are little and we're feeding them yogurt. I fed my kids yogurt. I, hell, I made my own yogurt. I stood boiling it on the stove. Well, you're not supposed to boil it. You're supposed to bring it just before it boils. But it always used to boil over and make a mess all over the stove and then smell weird. So we thought that we were doing the right thing. But we're seeing now there are two things. We started using hormones in animals to make them grow faster and produce more milk. A normal cow will produce maybe 20, 30 liters of milk a day for her calf. They need to get the cows to produce 100 liters. Have you ever seen these udders when they're literally dragging them on the ground? That's hormones that do that. So since the 1950s and 60s, we introduced the contraceptive pill. We introduced hormones into our foods. And there's also, you know, once all well, you can go on hormones when you're menopausal. But the, the, the most that will do is that it'll get into our sewage systems and that will get into our water and it'll get into our seas and it gets into the fish. So they're finding that there are high hormonal levels, human hormones in um, estrogen and progesterone in fish because the sea is starting to, and we know it's contaminated with heavy metals. So how do you get this out? Exercise, natural, right, free from. You need essential fatty acids. Without essential fatty acids, you cannot stabilize the hormonal system. Omega-3s particularly, but omega-6s are easy to get hold of. I'm always saying, have some flax oil. Put flax oil in your salad dressing. Put it on this. Don't co ever cook with it and don't heat it. Essential fats are essential to the body. You can't make hormones without these essential fatty acids. So if your hormones are out of balance, they may be out of balance because you're unable to transport cholesterol to the cells where you need it. And cholesterol is one of the base ingredients of hormones. To make estrogen and progesterone, you need cholesterol. Your liver makes it, dumps it in the bloodstream. Essential fats, especially omega-3s, transported to the cells, to the glands, the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, the parietal cells, the adrenal glands, the ovaries and the testes. 
to make the hormones that we need to balance the hormonal system. And if you're not getting essential fatty acids, you're going to be in trouble. Now that could be one to three avocados a day, three to five olives to get omega-6s, quarter to half a cup nuts or seeds, one to three tablespoons uh, extra virgin oil, um, that's omega-6s. But to get omega-3s, you need one to three tablespoons of flax. It's the most reliable. I take omega in the capsules because it's perfectly balanced. They don't have any right now, they're on order. But you can use flax oil, don't cook with it, just add it to salads, add it and things. <laughs> I'm going to make a couple of things that'll help you. We find that when you're trying to balance the hormones, there are things you need. You need glucose to balance your blood sugar. So if you're going to the wrong place, avoid refined sugar. But you need glucose. Your brain can't work without glucose. You've got to have glucose. So fresh fruit, eat as much as you like. It's cherry season.